Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be very exciting because I will be talking about Quixel Megascans. Lots of people kept me asking what it actually is and what it is used for and to make it simple it's a high quality library of textures. It's mostly for environments and companies like MPC they use those Megascan textures for the Jungle Book and I actually have a few images of that. So, for instance, they used the vegetation, the ground, the tree box, and they used Quixel Megascans to create those hyper-realistic CG renders. And you can see all these images were created using Megascans. And here's a few more like this, for instance. And the cool thing about Megascans libraries, they actually provide you with uh, 3D assets, 3D geometry scans, OBJs, and you can actually use those textures to create super realistic meshes. So the first thing, um, well here's a quick video, I, some of you I guess have seen it. This is a few renders of it and then how you can sketch the geometry. So it's it, it's pretty sophisticated and along with, uh, with the website, with the textures, you get Megascan Studio which is a simple way to combine these maps to create super realistic textures which you then can export to your platform. So the library is pretty sophisticated already and they include also packs which means you get a tree pack or lava field pack which has lots of different materials. Um, for, for the sake of this demo I will be just downloading a few textures and I will show you how it works. So they've got a lot of things so these are the um, categories so for instance let's choose uh, I don't know, gravel for instance, and then you get lots of different textures for gravel. And the cool thing is um, it is being scanned for offline rendering, which means Arnold, Renderman, all these things, but also for real-time, for Unity and all these game engines. So they made sure that everyone can actually use it, which is very nice. Um, let's try, I know, 3D Rock for instance. So they also provide you with these scenes, right? Um, I'm not sure if I actually can rotate it in here. Not sure, but uh, you can ob um, obviously download all the meshes and render them in your scene. So in, th in this video, I will be just showing how to use the Megascan Studio. So that does not support 3D assets so far. Um, so I will be just showing you the textures. But I can show you what models they have. Um, so these are all the 3D objects. They've got so many. It's really a lot, like really hyper-realistic stuff. And depending on your lighting and your uh, 3D package, you can make really awesome images. So let's choose a surface, uh, which is, I don't know, let's just choose something now. Let's just go for a sand. And uh, let's see what we find here. Sand, rubble. I think now it's adding all the rest again. So what else do we have? Let's just go with uh, construction. That should be interesting. Some marble, some rocks, cracked concrete. This looks cool. So, and this is now, let's say we would choose this texture. Um, they provide you with displacement maps and roughness maps and everything which is really needed for your render. So on the right you can see the maximum resolution which is supported. So it's 4K render. You have a context which is um, real-time or offline rendering and then your, your shading workflow. And the new um, shaders from Arnold and Piaman, they support the metalness workflow. And the microsurface is roughness, and I think Piaman has glossiness as well. So it depends how your workflow is, but I'm pretty sure you can make use of all the ones. Um, right, so albedo is your base color. Then you've got amino occlusion. This is mostly used for real time. Then you've got cavity map, which is also used for real time, which gives you all the creases and detail, edge details. Then obviously a displacement map. Then you've got a bump map, like a grayscale and a vector normal map and a roughness map. So let's say I want to get this surface, right? So I'll enable these guys and 
I want to work in EXR format because I am doing offline rendering and I let's say I want to use a 4K render, right? A 4K map. So all I got to do is hit download um, and then it's downloading to my local machine and then it should be visible in the studio, Megascan studio, unless you have set it up correctly, then it should show up. So let's choose soil, for instance. What else do we have here? Oh, these are interesting, right? These big cracks, <laughs> right? So I, I think I have that one already. Yeah, there's a check mark. So this is already my library. So what else can we choose? Maybe some rocks. If we find some rocks, that would be awesome. Let's just search for rocks. Rock. That's cool. I have no idea. There are so many to choose from. Okay. Okay, so this one is done. So let's just choose this guy. You can see you've got your displacement maps, which is very awesome. These de this detail is amazing. And okay, let's the, these options, if you set them, they get saved. So you don't need to change them again. So I'm downloading this guy as well. So while it's downloading, I want to show you the studio. So this is a standalone app, which you can download from their website. And for now, let's just create a new project and call this training and add this guy. So this is now my working project. And in here you can create assets, which means textures. So you could create a ground, water, grass, whatever you want, like a brick wall or something. So I will be just calling this guy, let's just say ground. And we work in 1K as a working resolution. Obviously you can export it higher, but for the um, sake of speed, let's just work in 1K. And then you have your PBR workflow, which is in this case, Metalness. And this is how it looks like. The first um, time you open your scene, this is a, you get a plane, some environments. You can choose environments here. You've got desert and snow, which is more bluish tinted. And then you have a more warmer one like this. And what else is there? So first to get your library working and your preferences, make sure you set these paths. And wherever you download your textures, wherever they go to, it should be added here. And in this location, it will automatically pick it up and add it to the library when it's done downloading. So in a browser, you can see all these textures now or these assets appearing now. And I guess when the other one is finished downloading, which is just finished, so it showed up here with the, I think it was this guy. So now I've got uh, eight items in the library, which is cool. And you can also search in here. So all the metadata is coming from the website and you can search in here as well. Obviously some little UI tweaks, different uh, thumbnail sizes. Um, then you have your base mesh, um, and, which is uh, this guy here. This is your base mesh. And you can change the size of it like it gets them bigger so you have a higher texture resolution and the tessellation is used for displacement so if you have um, if you need more detail in the displacement you can up, um, increase this so you get more detail and then this is the workflow which we chose before um, background is currently the image you can disable that you can add blur if it's more if it's too distracting um, what else you can set the intensity shadow resolution all the basic things and in this export dialog you're exporting those maps for use in your package so in your render application so it might be Arnold it might be RenderMan or V-Ray all these things are being exported right here so let's get started I guess so let's go to browser and the first thing let's let's do first um, let's do use these clay tiles right so it, it takes a while to load the textures into uh, into memory. So once that is done, you see them right in your viewport. And it looks already pretty cool. And you can see the specs is behaving nicely. It's, it's now a dry desert clay. And what I always like to do, um, just for the fun of it, I tested this out a, f a few times already, um, depending on different environments. Um, so 
now what you can do, you can, can go to layers and you can see the so uh, soil and clay is one layer in here. So the next thing which, which we could do obviously is add another layer on top. So um, let's use like this wet clay thingy. So let's click on that. It's, it's loading the textures again. And obviously depending on your graphics card, it takes longer or oh, way faster. Um, what else is here? And you've got these um, little options here. I'll talk about them as well. Uh, then you can also change like this. The first tile is the texture repetition. So you can see how it would look like. Uh, oh no, maybe it's not that. Wait, where is it? That's a solid. That's water. Uh, oh, sorry, it's, it was this guy I was talking about, actually. Similar icon. So this guy is repeating the texture so you can see how it would look like repeated. And so f let's first disable the top one. And then you've got this drop-down menu here on the left, which displays all the maps you currently use. So if you uh, click one, two, three on your keyboard, you, you toggle or you cycle through those maps. So this is displacement map normal map, all these maps, which is pretty helpful if you're combining different layers. So um, for now, let's just increase uh, or enable the soil. And you can see what's going on. It's just adding the soil on top. But then the cool thing is you have different options to, to blend them in based on the height and displacement maps you got. So you can see they actually grow from the lowest parts up. And you can change also the um, the masking type so should it just come from the top to the bottom like for instance you would do snow like that you see it's filling up now or from from the below this is I think how it should behave so it's depending on what you need you can actually blend them in together like this and you can change the radius add more um, softness to this so all these things are very helpful to create realistic looking texture maps. So now I'm blending um, opacity is just a transparency slider so that's nothing too interesting and the cool thing is you can also um, you can map the albedo color so if you want to have a more matching color you can do that as well and the cool thing is if you toggle if you go to 2 you, you displaying the albedo alone and then you can actually match it r way better so it's kind of the same clay texture just a bit wetter I guess something like this should be fitting. And then one again to toggle the render. And you can see now now we got some, some interesting detail on it as well. So we see the clay and then we get this broken up stuff. So it's not that flat anymore. We get this nice muddy ground. And the cool thing now is we can actually um, add more detail to this. So we can add more amplitude, break it up a bit more. So you have really all the freedom to break this up so now you can see there's like a big heap now and there's you see what's going on it's piling up there so this but this placement map should be tweaked as well see what's going on it's pushing it up which is pretty cool so now what we can do because it's pushed up the cool thing now is you have this this water droplet and the cool thing about this it will automatically create you a water surface so I'm creating this and you can see what's going on here now. All of a sudden, the whole thing is flooded in water. And you, again, you can control everything pretty simply with those attributes on the right. So let's first um, bring this up a bit more so we have more height to the clay. And even maybe the soil. Let's bring this up as well. I think we should be able to do this. So we just push it up a bit. We reduce the frequency so we just increase the heaps like bigger heaps of sand. So now this is more broken up. It's not as uniform anymore. And you can see how the tiling looks like. You can see now, because I did that, um, you, you can see some tiling pattern. But if you go close enough, you won't be able to see that anymore. So let's say this would be my render. This would look pretty cool, right? Anyways, OK. So in the liquid or in the water um, attributes, you have also a few more options to control your overall look. Um, the first thing um, what you can obviously do is change the height of it. So the, the higher the threshold, the more water you'll see. And you can actually see that there is 
it is displaying the beneath layer as well. So it's pretty realistic, which is cool. Um, so let's just go for, I don't know, let's just go for something like this, which is pretty simple. And then you can choose choose the radius. This is more or less the fall off of the water. So you can see the, the edge of the water is being blended. And you can also, uh, what else? The surface is like the color, how transparent it is. And you have turbidity as well, the depth, how deep the water gets. So this is very shallow water. And you can change all this stuff. You can have like blue water, clear water, all the fancy stuff you can control here, which is very helpful. And then you have moist, which is how much of the liquid is being absorbed in the different layers below. So you can see if I increase that, more of the wet, it's not ref it's not water anymore, but you can see it's just a wet, moist surface. And for that, you can also change the radius to make it more blurry. So there's a bigger fall off. You can blur the overall texture detail on it, which you wouldn't do because you would lose um, detail on it. And you can change, maybe what, and you can change the, color of how how dark it is when it's wet or moist so i think this looks pretty cool so we got these pools of water we got um these moist areas and let's look at the albedo color and you can see what's going on here pretty nicely so this this texture would now being uh, exported and being plugged into the base color of your shader and just for the fun of it um, let's just add another Let's just add another layer of the screen moss. So it's loading the textures back in. So let's see what we can do with that. The soil should go beneath the liquid. And now it's interesting. Now we need to see how we can actually fit this in. Maybe the, the texture for this is too high frequency and it will break it. But we will see if I can bring in some amplitude, frequency low, and just move it down. Maybe not as high. And let's see if we can offset this a bit. Yeah, I was trying to position this. I'm not sure if you can actually position this. So it's the repetitions of the base texture, rotation. Oh, it's now redoing the textures. Okay. Yeah, so this was not as successful as I expected it to be. I wanted to position, I thought I could position it somehow. Maybe there is a frequency persistence. This is just the amplitude, right? Nope, that's not what I want to do. Anyways, so I, I guess you get the idea. There's a few limitations which I noticed already while testing this. Um, because you output one texture, um, there's only one index of refraction for your material. So if I wanted to um, have a different IOR, like a spec IOR for the water, Currently, I cannot do that. The only thing how I would be able to achieve that is using um, these maps to remap or grade out these more shiny areas. So this would be a way to do it if I would use a roughness map, for instance, and I invert this. All the white things is water, so I can create a mask for that to control the IOR or the um, amount of reflection. So if I'm happy now with this map and I want to uh, recreate this in Arnold, for instance, uh, I, I would go to export settings and this is typical folder structure stuff, nothing too important. And then you would export um, whatever your texture resolution is. I think most of them are 4K, which the ones I downloaded. So you would go up to 4K and you would also, I'm not sure, create height into the into file. I think this one would actually convert my amplitude, which I changed in here, into a displacement map. And then obviously you have the options to um, control 
the colors you want to use. So what I tend to do, um, I would use everything as EXRs. Albedo colors, they won't never go above um, a value of 1, so 8-bit is fine for that. But I guess displacement map should be EXR 32 bits and it should be linear. Um, linear is, I guess, automatically outputting EXR files. And spec maps should not go over one. So um, I think the most important one is that displacement is on 32 bit and the rest should be fine in 8 bit. But make sure, well, or I just tend to use EXRs for everything just to make my life easier. And if I output EXR files, I also make sure that everything is in linear space. So um, all my maps are linearized, EXR files, and some are 8-bit, which, like, which you actually cannot change if you do that. Interesting. So the default would be 32-bit for everything, which is maybe also a limitation. I think it would be nice to be able to control the bit depth with EXR files as well. Um, I think you can you can have 16-bit EXR files as well. Anyways, you do all this, and then you just hit export your maps, and then all these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six maps get exported, and you can easily plug them into your 3D application like Arnold or Piaman. It's super straightforward, especially Arnold now with the new surface shader. You can directly plug them to the base color which is the albedo, you can um, connect the roughness to the spec roughness and displacement and it should be as easy as that. And this is now the first of this Quixel Mega Scans tutorial. The next one will be more sophisticated where I will actually be downloading assets and like proper 3D objects and we will be creating a scene with that. So I will be, I don't know which ones yet, I maybe just like a nice tree stump or something with some rocks, surrounding rocks, and I will just create a little scene with that, and I will light it using Arnold. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope I showed you how cool this Quixel Mega Scans is, how big this library is, and with how much detail and quality you can get pretty good results. And just as a matter of fact, MPC um, adopted this into their pipelines to work on Jungle Book. And it, this is now implemented with their artists. So they will be using this for future videos as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.